Well, I've been there for, been going to Holland for many years. Yeah. And uh, let me see the stadium there, the um, Ahoy. Ahoy, you remember um, it, yes. Running around the stadium when it used to be, you know, the arena where... Yeah. It, yeah, I used to run around the I've arena. I've been there, I've seen it, <laughs> yeah. yes. So, uh, yeah, I have wonderful memories. So you'll be back there in the Ahoy. Yes, I'm looking forward to it. Great. My style, I don't know, I just happen to love uh, fashion and clothing and makeup and hair, as you can see. <laughs> you always uh, a lot of hair. Yeah. I'm jealous. Yeah, yeah hair, is, uh, hair is a big issue in my family. My children have big hair. We just, uh, hair is real important. <laughs> what, what does it say about someone? Hair is, is a big issue, a big important thing. Yeah, because psychologists... That's why conditioners sell a lot. <laughs> <laughs> and more and more. And shampoos. Because yeah. psychologists once said that when, when a man for example, has a moustache, he has to cover up something. Ah. But for women, hair... Do you think so? You, uh, I think so, yes, it's possible. No, I think it has, maybe, but it might have something to do with strength. I don't know. That's very old Hair story. has to do with power, maybe. Are you a strong woman? Do you consider yourself to be a strong woman? Uh, yes, I do. Yeah? I do. And who, who taught you to be strong? Um, I do think I'm balanced. Um, I'm balanced with my feminine energy and my male energy. Um, I had to be strong, as if you mean strong, meaning to be in charge of myself. Yeah. Um, because if you're a parent, a single parent, in many cases I've had to be, I've had to take charge of my life and I just had to be. I mean, if you're a wimp, you can get walked all over. Yeah. Um, and I just had to you know, take responsibility for my life. And you can get pushed around enough that if you don't, um, if you don't learn, you know, there's lessons in life, and life is its not going to always be like this or always like this. You know, you're going to get pushed around, and, and those pushes that life gives you are part of your lessons, and either you learn from them and get strong, or you fall down on your face. So you learn to be a strong woman. Yeah, you yeah. learn. Yeah. yeah. I, I consider you so extremely female. What, what's your male energy? What do you consider to be your male energy, then? Uh, Making decisions, uh, financial decisions, for instance. A lot of people want to close their eyes and not make financial decisions. Sometimes women like to do that and let uh, a man decide for them. But not only the financial ones are difficult, I think. No. What do you consider to be a very difficult thing that you had to come over, for example? Uh, being a single parent, you know, parenting alone uh, at times in my life some of those decisions. Were you capable with this unique career of being a good mother? With a, yeah, I'm, I'm happy that I made a decision to have my children and my career. A lot of uh, girls decided to have a career and not have their children. You know, making cho those kind of choices. I decided to have my children and my career, and yeah. it was difficult. Yeah. And uh, many times I knew that my children came first, and the career had to work around my having my family. That's how it should be. Isn't yeah, it? and yeah. Um, it was really hard. And strangely enough, I was able to still have my career, but I knew that my kids came first. My you say strangely came first. enough. Why is that strange? Yeah, because uh, you know, mostly you would think that the career would fall away. If you choose your children first, yeah. your career might fall away, but it didn't fall away. But a strong woman, and I have the impression that you were also a woman who, who has their standards very clear, is so often by men considered as a bitch, let's say. Do you have to cope with that from time to time? Because you have the impression that you know exactly what you're doing. And I've we men are so stages, often afraid of that. You know, I've gone through those stages where, you know, like, you know, wonder, okay, well, if I were a man, they wouldn't feel like that. You know, exactly. You know, I, yeah. I'm over that. That I don't worry about that so much. And maybe I'll get into that stage again, too. But truly, um, what my priorities are right now really in the right place. Um, my health is the most important thing right now. I went through a stage where I, got, I let myself get sick because I kept, kept worrying and about so much. So I, I, I got to stay healthy and I got to stay strong. Because if I don't stay healthy, I can't take care of my family. And are your no. boys still at the Harry Potter age? or? <laughs> no, they're older now. <laughs> they're older they're now. 14 and, uh, they're 15 and 16. My son is beginning to drive, oh my God. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What do you absolutely want to protect them from? Because you were talking about lessons in life. What do you absolutely want to protect them from? Is, A lot is of the violence uh, that's out there, guns, uh, you know, uh, a lot of things, uh, teaching them to learn to wait.
worried about sex and things like that. Uh, just a lot of things. I'm, I'm now a single parent. I'm divorced again. You know, sadly to say that I would love to be married for the rest of my life, but it yeah. didn't work out that way. Yeah. Um, and, uh, you know, trying to be a, a mother and a father to teenage boys. Um, I got, they've got two, three more years in high school before they go off to college and I got three more years to be a parent with them. But are they listening to you, the boys for example, and you say you have to waive the sex? Is, you, you do you have what? enough authority? You raise your children from the beginning. I, be, I believe that the first seven to ten years are the most important years and if you're there for them then, and if you, if you got their attention then, they will have your attention now. Yeah. So I had their attention between in the early years and I think that I have bonded then and now I have their attention now. En toen was het dus het huwelijk met Arne, een society event van de eerste orde want wie waren er niet? Gregory Peck was er en Stevie Wonder. I remember the the images of your marriage. Was it in Switzerland or? Yeah. In Beautiful. Yes. I mean, <laughs> but with a career like yours, can you have the time to grieve? Yeah, I actually, uh, I'm still grieving. You know, I, I love him still very much. You know, you don't know why things happen the way they no, do. You, you never do. Know. There's something else that's magically happened. Life goes on and then other magic happens. God works in mysterious ways because if the divorce didn't happen with my first marriage, I wouldn't have ever married Arna and I wouldn't have had these two boys. Yeah. So, I mean, you see, if you, you don't know what's what's going A to happen. A miracle can happen every day. Yeah, you yeah. don't know That's what your future you will bring. See, so, yeah. so you never know. Ross, ze trat op bij de inauguratie van Bill Clinton. You were singing at the inauguration of Bill Clinton. Is he still your favorite type of president, let's say? <laughs> you know, uh, again, we, it keeps getting better, you know? We keep learning. Even with him. <laughs> yeah. Ook haar dochters kozen voor een carrière in de showbiz. En zegt ze, ik vrees dat het ook bij de jongens in de genen zit. Maar hoe ziet ze haar eigen toekomst? I was starting to look at downsizing in my life. My ego doesn't require a lot yeah. at this time. I wanted to simplify, small size. I, you know, I, I didn't need, I don't need a lot of cars and televisions and stuff. I, I was looking at, you know, what do you need now, Diana? You want to simplify yeah. and downsize. That's what you hear you know. so often with yeah. aging. If we talk about aging. It's, it's aging, isn't yeah. that? That must yeah. be aging. Yeah. But you know, how, how come, for example, talk, talking about aging, that we Europeans have the impression that American women nowadays, aging American women, are obsessed with uh, beauty. The strange thing is, for example, if you take an average American actress, they always take Simone Signoret, the French actress, as a great example, because up till the end of the career she had great roles and she didn't do any sort of nose job even. Yeah. But we have, how do you look upon that? I don't know, maybe it's the industry that forces the women into that, maybe, possibly. I told my kids, maybe I could, my kids got nuts when I say that. I said, what about a little, my kids say, get away, mom. If you do that, I'll never speak to you again. Yeah. <laughs> but you know, like. But they have their standards also. Yeah, you know, but I mean, just take care. I think if we just, I think when you're in front of the camera and all of that, you worry. And a lot of women actually lose their jobs if they don't look beautiful. Do you know where you're going to within 10 years time, for example? Uh, well, as I said, what I would like to do is to simplify my life and just just take care of the kids. Uh, no, I really don't. I didn't want to look too far in the future. And I didn't want to say this because you should never say never again, but maybe this would buy, might be the last tour that I do. I might not tour again. So you'll have to be there. Yeah, touring <laughs> might be a kind of a burnout at this time in my life, you know. Traveling, sitting behind a mirror, putting makeup on every night and all that kind of stuff. But, but one thing is for sure, someday we'll all be together. Yeah, someday we'll be together. Okay. Yeah. Thanks very much. Thanks so much.